Hello. Remember like four or five months ago where I brought you guys along as I cleaned up and rearranged this office? May or may not be doing a little makeover. This room was feeling just too flat. It's been completely white for two years. Just kind of like a white room with white furniture and a black ceiling and that's it. We're about to dive into the second iteration of our home renovation, which means we're gonna be doing our primary bedroom, bathroom, and closet. And we're gonna be moving into our old filming room. Remember this room? Yeah. So we're gonna be moving our bedroom into there temporarily. And if I know Chris and I, that project is probably gonna take up to six plus months. Let me know in the comments if you want me to like bring you along on our temporary bedroom makeover. That means that we have to remove everything that's in the room currently somewhere else. So yeah, I'm reworking this room to make everything work. We're gonna go super dark, super moody. We're gonna do a new layout, new paint, and we're gonna do some furniture swappage. Let's go. So I've never actually done this before. I have samples, I have four samples of gray. I know I wanna paint the room dark gray, but I don't know what gray I want to go with. Basically putting a big box on each wall, and then I'm gonna come back and look at them throughout the different lighting scenarios and see which ones I like. You wanna make sure when you're picking gray that it doesn't have any weird undertones that you're not happy with. I got my favorite uh, gray that I use all the time as kind of like a control, if you will. Gray. Shit, this is my gray. Oh yeah, you like this. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. I'm gonna do another coat. And then we're gonna step back and have a look at it. And I'm gonna ask Chris what he thinks. But in the meantime, let's talk about the new layout and the plans for the office. So after analyzing the habits and seeing what was piling up, we hit the drawing board to figure out a new plan that would work way better for the office. Remember when I said I don't like pushing furniture up against the walls? I'm not normally a fan of putting furniture up against all the walls. Well, I really hate it, so we're fixing it. So this is the floor plan for the room. We have the door here, the server closet here, the entry here, and then the windows here. So I have my workstation right here. I moved a shelf here. I moved Chris's desk here. And then we had all of this open space to just kind of like do stuff. But drone stuff started piling up here, camera bags here, papers here, and I realized that we don't have any storage in the space whatsoever, so we scratched it. So this is what the new layout is gonna be. We're gonna take the shelves from the filming room and we're gonna put them along this wall here. And this will give us lots of storage for our camera gear. It will give us four large drawers to store stuff. And then of course we have places to put our bags, etc. I'm gonna move my workstation over here and we're gonna have the two monitors here. I'm gonna put a filing cabinet right here. And this will allow me to have a big ass workstation with the mess that I normally have. But you won't be able to see it when you're standing in the kitchen. The view is gonna be at this shelf here. We're gonna build a desk shelf for right here. We're also gonna mount a wall lamp right here. We're gonna do some lighting behind the monitors here and probably add some artwork right here. If you notice, we have a new desk here. Yeah, this was his desk from the office. I moved it down here. We actually have a smaller Ikea desk that we had in Vancouver. Um, so we're gonna actually move that in here and we're gonna float it right underneath the window right here. There'll be no computers on it, but we are gonna put a nice big desk pad on it, a nice desk lamp, which will match our wall lamp. We'll have our chair here, and that way we have kind of this overflow space. This is not to scale, so this should be a little bit larger than what it looks like in the sketch here. We're also going to add blackout shades in the window, which I was supposed to add in the last video, which I didn't. And then we're gonna do a full wall of light gray linen curtains here. And they're not gonna be for any other reason other than just to kind of soften the wall, soften the space, and just cut some of the light without being a blackout shade. So we start moving stuff around. Things might have to change, but this is the plan for now. this once before. Oh wait, it was like five months ago. We're gonna reuse this in a different room. Shop in the house, bye bye. Oh God, this is heavy. Yeah, I like the gray. You like it? Uh-huh. I wasn't sure at first. It's a gray. I just assumed you were talking about like dark, dark gray. Like, like our gray? Yeah. Well, like, th like this gray? But then I forgot that the ceiling was black. So you kind of want to have a little bit of contrast. I'm always a fan of just painting everything the same color. So it blends in. Like painting the trim the same color as the wall and the painting the door the same color as everything. Just so it's all just one uniform color. How do you feel about me redoing this room again? Like it's your room. You two do. years later. Whatever you want to do. Good job with that impression. <laughs> 
tiny micro turns. <laughs> Drop the screw down. <laughs> no, I'm actually stuck. I'm actually, I'm actually stuck. Ow, hey, I just rolled. Ow. <laughs> we redid this room two years ago. Never put up curtains, pinned a black sheet and a shower curtain to the window. Then five months ago when I made that video, I really need to deal with this. That does not look good. The whole purpose of making that video was to put up the curtains and I never put the curtains up. So we're gonna do it right now. So we're doing two layers of curtains here. We're doing blackout shades in the window so we can cut the light when we're editing, color grading. But then we're also doing ceiling to floor, wall to wall, linen curtains, and that's just gonna diffuse the light and soften the space a little bit. Whoops! You broke it. Did it break? Yeah. Well, we were so close. We were so close. Damn it. Well, we have the blackout shades up. They're not the prettiest, but they're gonna be hidden behind the linen drapes that I'm gonna hang. Now, I'm gonna hang the linen curtains from this track that Chris installed for me. Okay, I feel a little bit contradictory because I think in a podcast or a video, I said that I don't like curtains, period. Period. I discovered that you can actually have modern Nice looking curtains, extremely overwhelming and confusing. I just don't understand curtains. So I ended up going with a track system using linen because I feel like linen has a really airy, light, modern vibe and that's kind of what I was going for. Something that could just kind of like blow in the breeze when the windows open during the summer. But what I found out from my research is there are a couple of rules when it comes to hanging drapes. The first one is when you're hanging drapes, you need to get more panels than you think. When you close your drapes across the window, they shouldn't be straight across. Your drapes should not look like this when they're closed. They look like this. They don't just hang one panel on each side of the window, get two or three panels. The mistake that I've also seen, and I'm guilty of this in my last house, is hanging your drapes either too short, where it makes your room look short, or not having your drapes long enough so they hang above the floor. Now in my last house, we did this because we had baseboard heaters and that's the challenge when you have baseboard heaters, you can't have those curtains touching the heater. For me, we don't have baseboard heaters so I'm not too worried, I can go floor to ceiling over the window. So if you are hanging curtains, don't hang them at the level of the window, bring them up a little bit higher and make sure to go a little bit longer than the window as well. One of the most important things in making your drapes look good is that making sure that the end piece isn't sticking towards the room, it's sticking back. So you, you kind of have to go through and manually fold these in to make them look good. So I'm just gonna come through and adjust these drapes so that those are back and that's looking pretty good. You can see when the, oh Jesus! When the curtains are properly hung, how thin the panel is. So that's eight curtain panels. I'm gonna hang two more, but I'm out of hooks, which I have the order from the internet, so they're not gonna be here for a couple of days, so we will move on to the next project. We'll finish this later. As I mentioned earlier in this video, when I was discussing my plans for the space with you guys, I was saying that camera gear was piling up on the floor and drone stuff was piling up on the desk and it was just getting a little bit out of hand and we needed more storage. I had these two Ikea shelves with the drawers. You might recognize these from this video. Chopping the house for reason stuff. So I, now I got four drawers so I can use that for storage as well as the filing cabinet that is going next to my desk. We're adding a little bit more storage. I'm actually kind of purging stuff as I go. We're kind of get our light situated and then we're gonna start styling the shelf. By the way, Huge shout out to Grove Made for sending me this beautiful headphone holder for free. Is that, is that how you're supposed to say it? Sending it for free. They also sent me a felt mat for the server closet. I had actually already bought a couple of things from them for the office previously. So thank you guys so much for that. No, one for you, one for you. So that's gonna be like, oh, hey, that's gonna look nice. <sighs> cool. Twenty-three days. Twenty-three days is how long it took to complete this room. 
Yeah, but you weren't doing it for like 23 straight days. Well, it wasn't just like a room makeover. Then we also wanted to build the desk shelf and the monitor stand. Yeah, and just like waiting for stuff to come from the internet. <clears throat> this is what the space looked like when we bought the house. We ended up painting the whole thing out white. We did this L-shaped desk. Then I got a new computer, had to move all my desks down. Oh, kind of forgot we had an L-shaped desk set up. Yeah, a couple months ago, I decided to move things around. We kind of did a new layout for the space and I hated it. It was so uninspiring to be in here. Location for your desk was never really ideal because the light comes right in yeah and always reflected on your monitor we reworked completely the layout and the new layout i think works way better having the workstation on the other side where your desk was originally just makes more sense in terms of like the natural lights that's coming in the room but then also the sight lines from the rest of the house it's going to be trashed within a week yeah things were piling up because there was no space to put anything so now i have a nice filing cabinet next to my desk which can hold all the papers that used to pile up we also have a shelf dedicated for camera equipment and you have a drawer because you know what's been piling up around here. Fountain pen paraphernalia. <laughs> I really wasn't sure what you were going to say. I thought you were going to say drone stuff. What do you think of the room? I like it. I like this layout way better, actually. And it also, was like, it's intentional now. Yeah, and I wasn't 100% on the trout initially. I think had I gone darker, I think it would have been too dark. Nothing is new except for a few of the accessories. So we shopped the house. We used the Ikea desk that we had already. This that, was your old desk where your old computer was at. Yeah, where we started this YouTube channel working on this desk. Full circle! Place that Chris can work, but also uh, a place that I can kind of step away from my desk if I want to use my iPad or sketch or do storyboards. I kind of have a separate different space right next to the window. So if I want to open the window and let the air flow through, it's kind of like a nice vibe. Or if you want to like load a camera bag, put the camera bag on the desk and then all your stuff is on the shelf. The chairs were really painful to like roll around. The wheels were really bad. I didn't want to buy new chairs. We actually swapped the wheels out for these like rollerblade wheels and they make such a huge difference. Oh, yeah, They're so hack. smooth. Yeah, it was a great hack. So the whole office is basically on Philips Hue and we put the pot lights here, all four of them, with just the regular color changing Philips Hue bulbs. <laughs> this is not sponsored by the way. I love the ability to choose your white point. Yes. Like during different times of the day, I want different color temperature lights. Like if you're in yeah. the daytime, you want to change it to like a daylight balanced light and it feels almost like there's a skylight. Not only do we have now the ceiling pot lights, uh, which aren't the most flattering lights and they're not great to have on all the time. So we added a bunch of um, accent lighting. So we added the two Tolomo, I don't know if that's how you say it, but matching lamps, one on the wall, one on the desk, and they both have Philips Hue bulbs in them. Those were a splurge item. Those are actually new to the room. And then we added the play bars on the shelf here. And that just kind of like adds some downlight on our camera equipment. It allows us to see the gear on the shelf a little bit better when we're, you know, changing lenses or putting our gear back up there. I also added one more lamp behind my monitors and that just has a Hue bulb in it. And that kind of is just washing up the wall behind the monitors. I find when I have an accent light on the wall behind my monitors, it makes my eyes strainless. My one gripe has always been, I've never liked putting the control at the light bulb. I've always been a huge proponent of having the control at the light switch when it comes to smart lights and things like that. And what we did in order to fix that problem of the light switches is I 3D printed these little, little boxes Covers. fit over the decor style switches. I glued magnets onto the switches themselves and then there's a little magnet holder in the cover. So they just basically clip on and it prevents people from like going and, and touching the light switch and they're pretty low profile. And I mounted a uh, hue switch right next to the light switch. So they're both kind of even, they look like they kind of go together. We did two kind of new things in this space that we didn't have before. A, we added a rug. I was like, what do we do? <laughs> <laughs> we added a rug and I was kind of reluctant to do this because of the wheels on the chair, but we had the rug. So I figured that we should try it and it actually kind of tied everything together. The main color scheme of the room is that dark gray and then the kind of secondary color is white. Um, but we also started bringing in this like light wood after we made the monitor stand. And so in order to make that work, we kind of copied that wood throughout the space on the tray that's on the writing desk, the monitor stand that's in the closet and the hooks that are on the wall. But adding the rug, it has this kind of cream tone and it kind of like just ties everything together and it helps with sound as well. Yeah, and I like when she shops the house because that just means we don't have to spend money on new stuff. And the second thing we did was we added floor to ceiling, wall to wall linen drapes. I'm not normally a fan of curtains, 
but I really wanted to soften the space to make it feel a little bit more adulty, a little bit more like a real modern room. We had a track and we just got some linen curtains from H&M and everything will be linked in the blog post. I used nine panels across the wall and I think it turned out pretty nice. I hemmed them so they're just above the floor. The floor ceiling really looks different than just like two drapes on each side of the window. This is probably gonna be closed just as much as it's open. Yes. And you don't want it to look, when it's closed and you don't have enough panels, it looks like straight. Yeah, just and not a good looks look. Looks like you're holding sheets up. We wanted it to still have some texture and some thickness to it while it was closed. When it comes to working in this room, like this is a room that Becky spends an exorbitant amount of time in. This yeah. is her, her work area. So you're here eight hours a day at least, mm -hmm. and you might as well have a space that you enjoy being in rather than just you know, a messy space that doesn't work functionally with, you know, sheets hung up over the walls. It was really important to me when we were doing this makeover that the room felt like me and that I was really excited and happy to be in here. I liked the way it looked when it was all white, but it never really felt special. And I kind of felt bad investing in pieces that I love, like the lamps, like the curtains, because I, I didn't feel like I should spend money on the space. We moved everything out of the old filming room. Well, we have to clean it up, and then we have to turn that into a bedroom while we make over our primary bedroom, bathroom, and closet. Let us know in the comments if you'd like to see the process of us moving things into this temporary bedroom. Yeah, something that you're only planning on being in temporarily. How do you make it nice with the minimal effort? Well, let us know if that's something you guys would be interested in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. That outro sounds like so 2016. Do we need a new one? I don't know. Like, do people really need to be told to subscribe? Like, like the don't. video? I feel no. Like it's just like a reason for people to stop goodbye. watching. Yeah. Why don't we just say we'll see you in the next one? Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Don't forget to tell them about the box for the, inter the internet box. Oh, I made a fake box for the internet. <laughs> a box for the internet. A box for the internet. <laughs> By the internet, she means the modem and the router. I don't need to hear it in the comments if you think it's going to catch fire. There's tons of airspace. <laughs> There's tons of ventilation. It's a three-sided It's a three-sided cardboard, cardboard box with holes in the top, holes in the side, and it's about six to seven inches away from the wall. You can't even tell. It's like one of those fake... Can you tell? It's like one of those Which one is it, Chris? It's like one of those. Which one is it? It's the one with the don't, speed holes. Don't look at those speed holes. <laughs> yeah, you can't even tell. Yeah. Can't even tell the internet's inside. Like, pull the it whole out. internet. The whole, whole internet's internet. behind there. Five minutes before I started filming this video, I had to clear this desk because Chris had it piled with his drone stuff. Like you wouldn't say we had a full room dedicated to drone stuff. Give me the loot. Give me the loot. <laughs> Hit it. Record it. Let's get it done. Yeah, do you know what you're going to say? No, I don't. We're a bit blown out here, boys. Aren't we?